Today I'm going to talk with you about leadership totem. And yeah, here you see a totem and uh, also a special welcome for the people uh, who are watching me uh, virtually because they, um, uh, they probably have a more difficult time to follow but uh, I really hope it all works and I hope you also enjoy it. Um, so this, th th today I'm going to talk with you about leadership totem and I'm a, I'm a bit nervous because it's the first time I do it. And um, I do it because um, we want to develop a concept around leadership. We are a leadership academy and we know there are a lot of leadership theories, but this leadership concept we are developing is much more about a red thread for you as HR people. So um, this is there to support you. And we of course very curious what your reaction is and if it helps you. Has anybody of you seen a, a, a totem somewhere, somehow, when you were traveling? Yes? Where did you see it? Morocco? That's US. Morocco. Morocco, ah, okay, and how did it look like in Morocco? Me Different than that one, yeah. This one is from the US, and uh, this is a typical US totem, and it has all kinds of animals. And each animal chosen is symbolic. And um, I choose this, and you will see that later, we choose this to work with animals because we want to get you a little bit dreaming when we talk about leadership. Because talking about leadership, we quite often have very standard answers. So, um, we're going to talk about leadership totem, and we're going to talk about leadership principles. <coughs> Do you ha does your organization have defined leadership principles? Raise your hand if your organization has that. Is Gina he not here anymore, Gina? No. Oh, not anymore. She would raise her hand because she showed them eh, this morning, also with symbols. So my next question, does anybody of you use them? The answer is no. And we think that leadership principles are like a totem of your organization. So let's have a look. So what is a totem? And uh, I put here, uh, I took it out of the, dic the dictionary. It's an object such as an animal or a plant, serving as the emblem of a family, clan or individual, and often as a reminder of his ancestry. So it's basically a symbol, it's a brand for you as an organization. And people who apply for a job in your organization, they could, for example, identify themselves with one of those totems. They would say, ah, this is a totem, this is clearly for the leadership they stand for. So a totem, when we talk about the leadership totem, it's basically where do you stand for as organization? You're not a tribe, I know, but uh, as an organization you stand for something. And you need that. And of course, I'm not forcing it, but I think it's very good that you think about for what kind of leadership do you want to stand as an organization? What is leadership? And uh, quite often when we talk about leadership, people think that, okay, leadership is like um, um, the, it's, it's, it's leading people, is having people around you. But what we see as leadership is that leadership is a process of social influence. A project leader is as much as a leader as the CEO is. Both are leaders. Eh? In the end, they do it to maximize the efforts of others towards the achievement of the goal. We don't do leadership for fun. In the end, we are leaders in order to successfully implement our strategy and to be successful as a company or as an organization. So this is leadership and totem. I'm going to show you now a small movie about this totem. We as Leadership Academy Amsterdam, we think that leadership is like a fingerprint of yourself. 
So your whole life comes into expression in leadership. And that's why leadership is very individual. We can, of course, develop leadership principles, but it starts with the individual leader. And let's have a look at this video. And I hope it will start up automatically. What is your totem animal? A totem is a spirit being, sacred object, or symbol of a tribe, clan, family, or individual. Some Native American tradition provides that each person is connected with nine different animals that will accompany them through life, acting as guides. Different animal guides, also called spirit guides or power animals, come in and out of our lives depending on the direction that we are headed and the tasks that need to be completed along our journey. Some Native American beliefs further explain that a totem animal is one that's with you for life, both in the physical and spiritual world. Though people may identify with different animal guides throughout their lifetimes, it's this one totem animal that acts as the main guardian spirit. With this one guide, a connection is shared, either through interest in the animal, characteristics, dreams, or other interaction. This animal guide offers power and wisdom to the individual when they communicate with it conveying the respect and trust. This does not necessarily mean that you have actually touched or spent time with the animal, more that you are open to learning its lessons. For some, knowing what their totem animal is is almost an innate process. It's as if they've always known, inexplicably drawn to the animal or having a special feeling for its energy. For others, they wonder how to tell what their animal totem is. Here are some questions to ask yourself if you're trying to determine the animal that is your guide. Have you ever felt drawn to one animal or another without being able to explain why? This could be any type of living creature, including birds and insects. Does a certain kind of animal consistently appear in your life? This doesn't necessarily have to be a physical appearance. It could be represented in other ways, such as receiving cards and letters with the same animal pictured over and over, unexplainable dreams of a particular animal, watching television and seeing the same animal featured time and time again, or actually having the animal show up. When you go to the zoo or park, wildlife area or forest, what are you most interested in seeing? Are there any animals that you find to be extremely frightening or intriguing? Is there a particular creature that you see frequently when you're out in nature? Have you ever been bitten or attacked by an animal? Have you ever had a recurring dream about a certain animal or a dream from childhood that you've never been able to forget? Are you drawn to figurines or paintings of a specific animal? If you still need more help, ask the universe for a dream or vision to see if anything comes up. Also ask the animal to show itself to you and pay attention to what you begin to see from all sources. Television, books, billboards. Does one animal begin to appear frequently? Once you have determined which animal is your guide, you may see that the characteristics are similar to those of your own personality. One thing to remember is that you cannot choose your totem spirit. Rather, it chooses or has already chosen you. The spirit chooses you and they decide to whom they will reveal themselves. Much of the process of identifying your spirit animal is paying attention to both your past and your present. It's a process of developing your inner knowledge and spiritual understanding. Okay, so this is, this is about personal leadership and probably an animal popped up somewhere in your mind. You thought, okay, this is typically me. This is typically relates to me. Uh, and, and sometimes it's a dog, sometimes it's a cat, sometimes it's a bird, sometimes it's an insect. It could be whatever it is, but it tells something. And that's why a totem is so interesting to build, because you could imagine that you, as an HR, you do a workshop with your leadership team to find out which totem animals represent us as leadership. What kind of behavior do we want to see? And what we are looking for is leadership principles. Leadership principles are the framework of action that a leader will take to help them get their team to the strategy common goals. Good leaders understand what their principles need to be and put them into practice every day. And you as HR, you are in the lead here. 
And what I hear a lot talking about is that we're talking about um, how committed are our co-workers, how do, can we get them engaged. 70% of engagement of co-workers comes from leadership. People, people come to your company for a role, they leave because of a leader. So the importance of leadership, I would like to highlight here. You need these principles. You need these principles for a number of reasons. Because these principles, they are the foundation of everything you do. You cannot have leadership development programs without knowing what are my leadership principles. And maybe uh, you've seen this picture here. Strategy implementation can only be successful if it is built on the right leadership and the right culture. And what we basically claim with this, that we can talk about agile leadership, we can talk about hierarchical leadership, all types of leadership, but it depends on your strategy. If you, in a, if you are in a refinery of um, rum petrol, you cannot have democratic leadership because it's a very dangerous process. You sometimes need hier hierarchical leadership. And we are quite often as HR going with the trend, like I did myself in the past. But based on the strategy, you have to choose the culture which fits to it, and you have to choose leadership which fits to it. And by saying that, it is your responsible as HR to have this. And this afternoon, we're going to look at um, which leadership type belongs to which type of company and which type of strategy. Okay, so when saying that uh, leadership principles are the base of your activities, I just put some activities up here where I think that if you don't have leadership uh, principles, it, it will become very hard to, um, to build it. For example, we will talk this afternoon about uh, leadership development centers. More and more we get convinced that uh, leadership development is basically from the leader itself. We are not pushing it, we are inviting him or her. So for a number of international companies, we are building development centers where people can apply to participate and where they can learn about their strengths and weaknesses concerning leadership. But you need leadership principles for that. There are regular opportunities for leadership development. Individual leadership coaching, this morning it was mentioned mentoring, leadership development programs, leadership performance talks. Without leadership principles, what do you measure? What are, how are you developing and giving opportunities if you don't have the leadership principles, if you don't know what you expect? Securing the, the right leadership, leadership assessment interviews, exit interviews, recruiting people. What do you ask for when you talk about leadership? Do you have a framework for the people who are recruiting what to ask about leadership? in order to find out if there is a right fit. Leadership principles, again, are fundamental to this. Measuring quality of leadership, 360, employment engagement, leadership performance round, all based on leadership principles. So by saying this, we think that leadership principles are the foundation for leadership in your company and are also the foundation for a successful implementation of the strategy. And this afternoon, we will, in our workshop, we will try to find the leadership principles which your company could work on. And by that, giving a start in all those activities to have a strong foundation. So I very much invite you for this afternoon to participate in the workshop. Um, that's where I will not talk, but you do the work. And where possible, I will give you some frame you can work with. But uh, it's about you and it's about your organization, specifically finding out what could be the leadership principles for your organization. Thank you very much. Are there any questions?
and he doubts. <laughs> no? No questions? No doubts? I'll read one. <laughs> okay. Because one of the uh, attendees online has one. How do you connect the principles with the strategy and culture of a company? Do you start from the leader or from the company? No, you always start with strategy. Strategy is leading. Strategy is deciding what type of leadership do we need? What kind of culture do we need? Not the other way around. So strategy is leading. So leadership team basically is leading here and starts the first one to, um, to give these leadership principles. They have the important task to lead by example. And I don't have to explain to you that that sometimes is difficult because their ability to change should be present and they should show the new leadership. Is leadership harder in online? <laughs> Is leadership harder in online? Um, what I notice, um, because sometimes we, we, we of course think about the new virtual world, what I notice is that um, it's more individual. It basically means that you as a leader leading a virtual team, you have to take time for individual catch up with your team members. And quite often that is forgotten. It's done in groups, that's efficient, right? You do a morning call at eight o'clock and everybody can work for the whole week. But minimum one time a week you need to speak and connect to the concerned coworker or manager. 